watching it together and we're going to have a wonderful live stream tonight i'm going to be talking about learning about your immune system in this time of the coronavirus or COVID 19. okay well, i'm talking about the immune system we're hearing every day on social media and tv how you need to strengthen your immune system to fight the COVID, to fight viruses your immune system is important boost your immune system right did you know that stress can actually affect your immunity and affect your immune system and how well you fight infection? Did you know that? And the one question I want to ask you is, do you know what the immune system is? Okay. I know you may have heard of it, but do you actually know what it is and how important it is? So that's why I wanted to do this live stream for y'all tonight to educate you why it's so important to build your immune system and actually how truly remarkable it is. And also, I want to educate you on what the immune system is, okay? And when we talk about the immunity or the immune system, we really don't see it, but it's working for us all the time. I mean, we literally can't see it. Most of it we can't, anyhow. But tonight, I'm going to talk to you about what is immunity, what is the immune system, what the immune system is responsible for, what are the components of the immune system, how does stress affect your immunity? How we can strengthen the immune system? And then I'll give you a brief FYI or a couple of tidbits at the very end, okay? So you may want to take a couple of notes, okay? Um, just to keep your thoughts together when I'm going through this. Um, and before I get started, I just want to say a couple of hellos for some people who are chiming in this late evening. I see Veronica in Texas. Woohoo! Thank you, Yvonne, for joining me again. Thank you, Sally, for coming on in. Hey, Lisa. Hey, hey. thanks for joining tonight. Okay, so like I said, y'all may want to take a couple of notes. Before I get started, I just want to say, please understand, I am but a humble family medicine physician. <laughs> I'm not an oncologist. I'm not an immunologist or an allergist, okay? I'm just going to present to you a simplified version of the immune system and your immunity. And it is very awesome. It's very, very complex to say the least, okay? But I just want you to be aware that when you're hearing all this stuff, you know, on the internet and on the news and social media, that how, that how that you need to protect and boost your immunity, you'll kind of have an understanding of what that all entails. So let's get started, okay? What is immunity? I actually took this definition from Webster's Dictionary. And it states that it's a condition of being able to resist a particular disease, especially through preventing development of a pathologic microorganism or by counteracting the effects of its product. What does that mean? Basically, it means the ability to get rid of something that's not supposed to be there in the first place. That's what your immune system does. Okay, that's what immunity is. What is the actual immune system? It's basically our protector. It protects you from things. It protects you from things that enter, enter your body that normally shouldn't be there. It's actually what's called your defender. It's a collection of organs, cells, lymph nodes, vessels called the lymphatic system. They all work together, but don't worry, I'm going to talk to you about it and help you understand. Now, how do we get our immunity? The immune system is actually very smart and it can adapt to new infections. Our bodies gain immunity in two ways, a natural way and an acquired way. In the natural, when we're born, our bodies already have some immunity there. Babies get antibodies from their mothers as they're growing in the womb, and they may also gain some, some antibodies or some immunity when they're breastfeeding. So it's very important to, to breastfeed. Even just do your best, just even try a couple of weeks, just anything, just get some of that breast milk in the new babies, okay? Okay, then you have your acquired. Our bodies also learn immunity over time. And when we get sick, our body learns how to fight off the disease. The next time that disease invades our system, our body is ready for it and they can, it can quickly uh, produce antibodies that can prevent infection. And we also can. Um, obtain some immunity from vaccines, which I'll talk about a little bit later as well. Now, what is the immune system responsible for? The immune system is actually responsible for detecting a whole bunch of different things that should not be there that cause disease. And those things are called pathogens. 
They can be bacteria. They can be viruses like the COVID, flu, whatever. They can be fungus, toxins, carcinogens, you know, the carcinogens that are out, out in the atmosphere or like in uh, uh, cigarettes, things that cause cancer. Worms, which are also called parasites, um, also pollutants, just things that are already out in the atmosphere, just, just out there. We can't even see them. And while all this, the immune system the whole time has to be able to differentiate our own innate cells from, from the pathogens. And your immune system has to have memory. Yes, memory. And when something gets into your body, the immune system not only tries to get rid of it then, but it also makes cells to remember in case the next time you come in contact with it in the future, the, the immune system can be ready for it. Isn't that something? So the immune system is actually able to communicate with the rest of the entire body. And when the pathogen is detected, the message is sent out warning the body is about to be under attack. And then the immune system can direct those correct cells to go do their thing. Now, what are the actual components of the immune system? Let me see if anybody else is coming in. So it, let me just stop right here about before I get started. If you think I'm going to just discuss the minutia of every little thing about it, I'm not. I still want y'all to listen. I don't want you to fall asleep. I know it's 1130, 1145, and this is probably going to help y'all get to sleep. But I want to keep this as simple and, you know, understandable as possible, okay? <laughs> so this may this may add to your, your bedtime, uh, your bedtime regime, right? <laughs> okay, but anyhow, we have fighters of infection that do different things depending on what enters our body. And the immune system develops all kinds of cells that help destroy disease and these microbes. So some of the cells are actually specifically designed for a certain kind of disease. And all throughout the body, these disease-fighting cells are stored in the immune system, waiting for the signal to go out to do their battle, okay? So we have these B cells, T cells, helper T cells, natural killer cells, and these memory cells. Okay, so let me back up a bit. And I want to actually show you the, the components of the immune system. Let's see if y'all can see this, okay? So you first have what's called your external barriers, okay? They are the very first line of defense. They are the skin, which is the largest organ. It prevents entry. You have your mucous membranes. So that's lining the eyes, the nose, the throat, the genitals. You actually have your tears that come from your eyes and they help trap what doesn't belong to you. You know, you get your watery eyes or tearful eyes. That's your immune system right there, trying to trap whatever dust particles and whatnot that don't belong there so you can get it out. You have little hairs that actually line the inside of your nasal passages and they try to protect them from everything that's entering to go in there further. You also have your cough reflex, your sneeze reflex that are actually in response to your body saying, uh-uh, you don't belong here in my lungs. Let me try and cough you out or sneeze you out, all right? And then I'll talk about the gut bacteria as well. You'll see that. Then you actually have your organs of the immune system. We're going to start off, you have your tonsils and your adenoids. And due to their position in the throat and the palate, their defense comes into contact with pathogens just really soon and quickly. They activate your immune system almost right away if necessary. The tonsils are on the right and the left side and the adenoids are actually in the, the roof of the throat, right way up in there, okay? Then you have your digestive system, okay? You have the bowels, the stomach, okay? And the stomach, actually uh, secretes acid. Uh, most of your immunity is actually in your bowels. I mean, if you think about it, and I'm just putting it out there, the foods that we eat is not just food, right? I mean, we eat what went into the food that we don't know about. Uh, we, we eat what it's in the environment that got onto the food that we don't see or know about. We eat the germs. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we're eating besides food, if you know what I'm saying. But your stomach acid can actually help kill a lot of that. And even before that, 
when we're chewing our food, we have our saliva and that saliva can actually help at some point break down some of the bacterial walls so that that stomach acid can get to it. And um, I think that's just amazing, just starting off right there, okay? But we also have this extensive immune network in our intestines that actually let things pass that's supposed to and actually prohibits what's not supposed to get in through there. There's a barrier in the, in the um, uh, intestinal system as well. And actually more than half of all cells that produce antibodies are actually found in the bowel wall, especially the last part of the small bowel in the, um, in the um, appendix, okay? And I'm not sure if you know about this, but the large bowel actually plays a, a, a big role. The, the large bowel actually contains bacteria in there that actually belong to the, to the body, to our body. And it's called flora, gut flora, F-L-O-R-A. And these bacteria in the large bowel actually make it very difficult for those other pathogens or other bacteria and whatnot that don't belong there to kind of settle in there and enter our bodies, kind of like a constant war. And the immune system of the bowel actually tolerates our natural gut flora. So it's like, okay, y'all hang out. Y'all can help fight this bacteria with me. Okay, so just stay on in here. We're not going to bother you. Okay. And another item in our immune system is actually your bone marrow. So you see I'm pointing here. This is like the, the leg bone or the femur. Okay, so the bone marrow is here. It's also in other places in the body. But the bone marrow is actually like a spongy tissue that's situated in the core of the bones. And actually most defense cells are produced and also they multiply in the bone marrow. Then they migrate from the bone marrow into our actual bloodstream and then reach, they can reach other organs and tissues there. And, and this is where some of these defense cells actually mature and specialize. Then you have your spleen. You see it's right here above the stomach. And it's in that um, upper left abdomen, the upper left quadrant of your abdomen, just kind of beneath the diaphragm, which is that the breathing part. So I'm just going to outline here. If you see on, right here, this is where your diaphragm would be. And I mean, it's not here, but this is where the diaphragm would be. Okay. And this, the spleen actually stores different defense cells that are released into the blood to get to different organs if needed. Um, it, it, it actually is responsible for removing red blood cells, um, blood platelets, which are called thrombocytes. They're responsible for blood clotting and um, they're stored in the spleen and they're actually removed um, in the spleen as well. So there's a lot of blood flowing through the spleen tissue, needless to say, it's very vascularized, okay? And at the same time, this, this spleen is very kind of soft. So if there's a person that, so things like a heavy injury or an accident or whatnot, and the spleen gets hurt, it may need to get operated on or the person can very quickly bleed, bleed out. And so that spleen may need to either get operated on or actually removed. And if that's the case, if it's actually removed, then the other parts of the um, immune system will have to kick in and do the spleen's job, okay? Then you also have the thymus, the thymus gland, not the thyroid gland, the thymus, the T-H-Y-M-U-S. And it's really only fully developed in children, all right? And from adolescence on, when we get older, that thymus gland kind of turns into fat. But this thymus gland actually sits behind your breastbone or your sternum, which is uh, by your heart. So I don't know if you can see that right here. Here's the heart, and then the thymus gland is right here. And certain defense cells are, are made here. Okay. Oh, hey, Lisa, I see you say Charles is here too. Hey, Dr. Vaughn, hi. Okay, then you have your lymph nodes. So you can see on this diagram here, there's lymph nodes. And these lymph nodes are kind of dispersed everywhere in your body. And I mean everywhere. I mean, it's just everywhere, okay? And um, they are kind of like little biological filters. They kind of filter things. They contain actually different defense cells and they trap the pathogens or disease-causing microorganisms, and they actually activate the production of specific proteins in the blood. And if the lymph nodes become swollen or hard, it can actually be a sign that there's an active infection going on, okay? So case in point, I'll give the example of like a strep throat or a throat infection. So you have lymph nodes that are here lying in the head and neck, and if you get like a strep, a strep infection, which is bacterial, these lymph nodes kind of swell up because they're making a lot of these cells that are there to go try and fight the infection. But you may be like, oh, I feel my glands right here. And you touch them, they hurt. And it's, it's, it's painful to swallow and all that stuff. But that's a, 
just a sign that your immune system is working, is doing its job, is trying to make all those those uh, fighting cells to come attack that uh, infection in your throat. So they also act like little fil little filter stations um, of, of lymph fluid as well. Then you actually have your actual lymphatic system. So you can see all these lines here. You have your your vessels, your blood vessels, your veins, your arteries, but you also have lymph your lymph system too. And they actually contain different defense cells which trap the pathogens. And um, they actually help to exchange fluid from your like tissues and your circulation um, into this lymph fluid in this lymph uh, vessels so they can uh, filter what's in there. And the lymphatic system of the lymph nodes and vessels because um, it helps drain everything. It helps keep things moving and cleansed. Um, the rest of the, the lymph and whatnot is actually remain, removed by the drainage system of the lymph vessels, which forms like a, a fine, thin walled vessels in the body. So you can just see it all here. It's just everywhere, everywhere, literally. And it's so vitally important. Okay, so let me ask y'all, let me stop right here. Is your head spinning yet? Because mine is. I mean, we went through a lot of information. I hope you took notes. If not, definitely go back and, you know, hit replay. <laughs> um, so like I mentioned before, did you know that stress can actually weaken your immune system or harm your immune system? And chronic stress is bad for the immune system. And this is why. I want to tell you why. How, how does stress actually affect your immune system? Or how does stress decrease your immunity? Well, if you think about it, let me just stop right here. Let me hide it. Good. So yeah, if you really think about it, like I've mentioned before in previous live streams, when a person is actually stressed, the body actually tries to protect itself, right? It goes into this fight or flight, I must flee to pr protect myself and get out of danger mode, right? And the body needs to pull its resources together to combat the immediately perceived threat. That's what stress is in an acute situation. But ongoing stress or chronic stress actually makes us susceptible to illness and disease because the brain sends these defense signals to the endocrine system, which is like a hormonal system, which then release, releases these hormones and they not only get us ready for an emergency situation, but it actually severely depresses the immune system at the same time. And so uh, some experts actually say that, you know, this chronic unmanaged stress is responsible for you know, as much as up to 90% of the, the reasons why we have illness and disease. So that's pretty staggering to me, okay? And the way it does this is by triggering chemical reactions and flooding the body with cortisol. It's that stress hormone that we're always hearing about, right? Now, please keep in mind, there's definitely other factors that are at, at play, but, you know, the, the stress response system is, is definitely something that is, is present. So, how can we strengthen the immune system? Okay, what can we do? Okay, we heard all this talking about how do we get it better, right? So I was thinking we have these external strengthening mechanisms. You're gonna start from the outside in, okay? You're not gonna be putting your, your fingers in your eyes, your, your dirty hands and stuff in your eyes and in your nose and in your mouth and other places, you know, <laughs> that you know what I'm talking about. You need to wash your hands, okay? Um, you don't want to in introduce any extra pathogens. So wash your hands. And actually, I was a, a co-contributor to a live stream that we did a couple of days ago about preventing a corona spread. And one of the things that I talked about was hand washing. So make sure you do it for like 20 minutes, soapy water, rinse, dry very well. So please go look back at that live stream to, to see how that does. But after you wash your hands, you want to make sure your hands are moisturized. You want to keep them soft. When it's dry, when your skin is dry, overall, it can crack. And guess what? Those bacteria and viruses are just sitting there waiting. And other pathogens that are there, when that dry, cracked skin is creating an opening, and they're like, okay, I'm going to come on right in and cause problems. So not only keep your, your skin clean, but keep it moisturized too. Same with your mucous membranes. You know, your mouth, your mouth you know, brush your teeth, you know, Get your dental work done. You get get make sure your gums are, are good, okay? 
your mouth has all kinds of you know bacteria and stuff in it and when these cavities form and when you have these bleeding gums you're actually in essence you know creating an entry point for bacteria and viruses and other pathogens for getting into your system on top of that creating an inflammatory response in your system and chronic inflammation is not the best thing that you want to be having when you're trying to build your immune system up okay so even like when you're at work or wherever you need to go you know, use your masks that are offered, you know, protect those those entry points. Um, so you can decrease the inhalation of pathogens, okay? Which when they do, they don't, when you breathe in them in, they go directly into your lungs. You know, they try and pass all this silly and stuff to filter it out, but it still gets into your lungs. So that mask could be an extra barrier or protection or, or filter to help decrease some of that stuff getting down there, okay? And when you wear your mask, it helps you spread it, not spread things to other people, right? You want to bathe your body, right? Not just your hands, but when you're at home and whatnot, you want to wash all that stuff off. You know, keep that exterior bar barrier, you know, clean, okay? They also say that actually, and this is something new that I learned about, um, alternating between cold and warm showers actually can help boost or improve your Im immune system functioning as well as improving circulation. And another thing is, I'm just going to say it, okay? smoking okay now you can see how inhaling smoke and these carcinogens and cigarette smoke how it can be an issue because i just explained it you have a, like a direct entry into your lungs the cilia are trying to do all they can do but that tar and stuff it just kind of weighs them down and so they're not able to do their job effectively and so you hear people who have that smoker's cough right their body is trying to protect you as much as possible by making extra mucus and to trying to trap all those particles and whatnot, but it just makes it a little bit extra harder when, when it, they're all weighed down. I'll just leave it at that. I'm not trying to preach or judge, but I'm just giving you education, okay? So just give your lungs and other people's lungs a break and you know your immune system will thank you in the future. And you know, don't be mad, it's just the truth, okay? Um, then you have this internal strengthening of your immune system. So I'm going to see if I can share another slide with you. Oh, I forgot to talk about about stress. So. We, we went over this about how stress uh, can affect the immune system, okay? And then we're going to talk about internal strengthening of the immune system, okay? So you want to eat a healthy diet. But yeah, 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 yeah. What does that mean, right? We hear that all the time. What does that really mean? Well, I mean, give your body something to work with. I mean, it wants to work with you, right? But how can you expect a healthy, functioning, and vibrant body and, and feeling whole and stuff if you're feeding it poor quality foods and you know crappy foods because don't forget food is medicine right try eating a diet that doesn't really co contribute to um inflammation processed foods high sugary foods poor quality hormone laden meats i mean i know we don't want to hear it because that stuff tastes good but it really isn't good for us right and i say us i'm not just you know sitting here saying i don't eat some of that stuff but i know it's not the best right and so use this opportunity, you know, this coming week, if you're, you're quarantined at home or you have to stay at home longer hours to, you know, prepare a beneficial meal for you and your family, okay? You want foods that are high in antioxidants, anti-inflammation foods, packed full of nutrients that support and help build your immune system, okay? So citrus, that's a good one. Um, vitamin is packed with vitamin C, the oranges, you know, citrus foods. Um, red peppers, broccoli, spinach, cauliflower, garlic, avocado, sunflower seeds, turmeric, green tea, ginger, almond, dark chocolate. I mean, this is just a very short list of, of foods, um, but just please look up others. There's definitely you know lists out there that of foods that help boost your immune system. But you see how vibrant these these foods are and the colors and all that stuff. So foods with vitamin C, zinc. Uh, uh, the B vitamins, D vitamin is very beneficial. But actually this past Sunday, there was an actually an excellent live stream on herbal treatments for viruses. So if you're interested in that, um, 
my colleague, Dr. Kalani Tuit, she's a family practice physician, and Dr. Sam Price, um, she's a naturopathic physician. Um, and they talked about uh, natural things to help in this time of COVID for virus. So please take a look at that, all right? Um, search her under Dr. Kalani, D-R-K-E-L-E-N-N-E -N -N -E on Facebook. So you also wanna avoid excessive alcohol intake, all right? Let me hide this. There was a research done at Brown University that showed actually that excessive alcohol intake is toxic to the immune system cells called dendritic cells. And they actually play a, a crucial role in helping to seek and destroy invading microbes. And you know, this can actually lead to serious infections. I mean, even possibly life-threatening. Um, you know, not to mention that you have increased vulnerability to, you know, other viruses and other pathogens, okay? But for me, I, I want to go back to citrus. I love lemons. I mean, I love this so much. I even did a whole live stream about it. I mean, really. <laughs> I mean, it's so fresh. It's citrusy. It's uplifting. And it's full of vitamin C. And what I do is I actually squeeze some lemons in a, a big water gallon jug. And I just drink off of that for my hydration and water. I drink water too, but I'm just saying the, the lemon water is just so refreshing. You should try it. Okay. So. Again, just a suggestion. I know it's late tonight, but maybe plan something tomorrow just to, you know, have a family affair and just cook a nice meal, okay? And and just, you know, be grateful for that and, you know, be take reassurance that you're giving your, your body something nourishing that's going to improve it. Because I've always said one of the best gifts you can give to somebody is a good cooked meal because it's going directly into the system. It's helping them. It's making them stronger. It's making them to, to grow. Okay, so that's just my two cents on that. And finally, actually consider starting a prebiotic or a probiotic. I did a live stream about that as well. Prebiotics actually feed the good bacteria and probiotics are the good bacteria. Okay, so remember most of your immunity is actually in your gut, so you want to treat your gut right. Just please avoid white sugar because it promotes chronic inflammation, okay? The second thing you can do to internally strengthen your immune system is to get enough sleep. Don't do it right now during this live stream. I'm not done yet, right? <laughs> we get enough sleep, okay? <laughs> I know it can really be easier said than done. Um, you have work. You may be unemployed now, actually. You got the kids. You got bills. You got anxiety. You got stress, spouse, school, obligations. And now you got this corona all this corona, you know, weighing you down as well. So I know it can be weighing heavy on your mind. It can make it difficult to sleep. But sleeping is not only a time to calm down. It's a time for restoration, okay? Restoration, repair, and recharging, okay? So actually, if you can, invest in ways that you can improve your sleep hygiene. And again, I was in a live stream that talked about um, prevention of corona. And um, Dr. Carroll, she actually talked about... Uh, how you can get good restorative sleep. So it's very, very important if you can do that. So tune in again to that live stream. The third thing you can do is actually, obviously, lower your stress, right? In this day, everyone is on edge about corona, right? In addition to the everyday stress living, um, you, you just got to get through it, okay? So if you can lower your stress the best that you can, that would be very beneficial to your immune system, all right? Here's some ways. Deep breathing. I'll say it once, I'll say it a million times, that deep breathing helps activate that parasympathetic nervous system, that I'm calm, I'm safe, I'm at ease. So you can do some deep breathing. Meditation. If you can commit more time, longer periods of time, you can do that. Meditation, yoga. Exercise. So exercise not only strengthens your heart, improves your circulation, your, your lymph flow, okay, the, where those immune fighting cells are, it actually helps release those natural feel-good hormones called endorphins. Laughing. Now, I know you might be like, laughing, I don't have nothing to laugh about. I got bills. That's fair enough. But if you can find something in your day to laugh about or be lighthearted about, it's just going to improve you. So watch a funny movie, a comedy show, something like that. Think about something that happened to you back in the day that was funny that could bring a little chuckle to your heart, okay? Because it only helps you, all right? One other big thing, too, that I'm learning to do as well is to release it. If you really can't control it or if you know you've done all you can do to try and help it and you can't, and that's said, you're going to have to release it, 
Just lift the weight off your shoulders. Just get that stress off of you. I know it can be easier said than done, but it's beneficial, I'm telling you. Read a book. It's an escape. If you have time to read a book before you go to bed um, or on a break time, it's an escape from what you're doing now, and so that can help lower your stress. Um, try taking an online class or listening to a podcast, something that's different or something you're interested in. Get your mind out of your current situation. Um, that can definitely help decrease some of your stress. Counseling. Now, this is something that's very important as well. If you just need to talk to somebody who's an objective ear, not just because of Corona, but just all of your life circumstances they can uh, that's helping you to uh, worsen your stress, if you can talk to someone else in the form of counseling just to kind of release some of that, it's going to help lower your stress levels for sure. And there's no shame in your game. If you need to go to counseling, just go do it, right? Listening to music. This is one of my favorites. I just love listening to instrumental music where um, you just hear the flow of the pianos, the instruments, and you can just totally take some deep breaths and relax. So listening to music is a good one. And then coloring. Um, for those of you who find this relaxing, I find it relaxing. I love to do it. I'm actually coming out with a coloring book, so stay tuned. But just coloring can just take you to another place. It's like a you're focusing on one thing and creating something beautiful. Just remember, and then I'm just about done. Just remember that chronic stress exposes your body to a steady stream of stress hormones that ultimately suppress your immune system. And so those bad bacteria and viruses are just waiting, okay? But your immune system needs to be ready for it. So lower your stress as best as you can, all right? So stay with me. We almost done. I'm just going to share a couple of tidbits, okay? Some people might be wondering, okay, what are, what are allergies? All right, you've heard of allergies. You've seen people always sniffing and watery eyes and stuffy nose and a little bit of a cough, but what is that? And allergies actually come from when your immune system actually mistakes harmless substances for threats, and then it attacks these harmless substances. So pollen is a good one. Pollen not gonna do nothing to you, you know, generally, but if it gets into your nasal passages, your body is like, oh, I gotta get it out of here. So it's is continually secreting that mucus to kind of get it out of there, but sometimes it doesn't really shut off, okay? So that's why you need to use what are called antihistamines to help kind of quiet your immune system down so it's not overreacting to those harmless substances. Now, what does it mean to be autoimmune? Sometimes the immune system can actually get a little bit confused and start attacking your own body, your good cells of your body. So that's what autoimmunity is. Now, what is immune deficiency? So what an immune deficiency means is kind of just like what it, what it sounds like. It means that your, your immune system is deficient. It's not working like it should work. It doesn't surmount the, the immune response that it should do to outside invaders. Um, and so uh, an immune deficiency can actually be acquired or it can be congenital, something you're born with, okay? Now, finally, how do vaccines work? So vaccines actually work by introducing microbes that are already killed or modified into your system, but we don't get sick, okay? They're modified, and then your immune system doesn't really know this, but what your immune system does is it builds up a defense, an internal defense, and these antibodies that can go against that disease. So it's like giving your body memory for when you actually, or hopefully you won't, but when you happen to have get in, in contact with that disease and your body is ready for it, that's the basis of vaccines, all right? Some immunity actually goes away over time, so you might need to get a new vaccine or a booster just to rev up your immune system, okay? All right, we made it. That's it. I hope this was very informative for you, and it gives you a little bit more understanding of what your immune system is, what it does, and really, truly how wonderful it is but mainly how important it is, especially in this day of the corona and other you know, viruses and bacteria, how it is very important for you to build up your immune system as best as you can and, and protect it. I mean, it's always working for you 24 seven. It doesn't sleep, even though you should, and hopefully you're not asleep right now, but anyhow, it's very important. So please share this live stream if you feel that someone will benefit from this and um, hit replay if you're watching this in the replay. I'm Dr. Dietra Gorman. I am your board certified family practice physician. I am a speaker. I am a best-selling author. 
and I am America's relaxation doctor. And I help individuals who are stressed at work learn to relax and refocus in order to have a more healthy, productive, and fulfilled life. And I know you want this for yourself. And if you do, I will kindly ask you to follow me on all social media at Dr. Dietrich G. That's D-R-D-E-I-T-R-I-C-K-G. Or visit my website at www.drdietrichg.com. See you again. And thank you all very much for joining me. Relax well. Boost that immune system. All right, bye.